Hello again. Uh, a little bit more on this thing of pride that's in the land that dwells in the soulish realm of our bodies, our nature, right? Our hearts. Um, God reveals something to me after the lesson that pride is also very selfish because pride does not consider others. And we are a very selfish and prideful nation and people. And all of us can have times that, not that we're proud, confident, but prideful. And this pride thing that dwells within people that doesn't wanna take responsibility for the things that they do, but yet they want other people to take responsibility for what they've done. Pride doesn't wanna be held accountable. Pride makes excuses. Pride calls the person who uh, has experienced a hurt or been harmed in some way the victim. But the very fact, the very nature that the prideful person does not want to take responsibility or be held accountable for what they've done or for the role that they play is you being the victim. Is you living in a mindset of scarcity you're not certainly not living in abundance, right? When you don't want to take responsibility or be held accountable or brought to a place of being aware of your role. Even if that's simply saying, wow, I never saw it that way. I never thought of it that way. But running from negating, avoiding, acting like something never happened. You, you caused that hurt. You were the one who did that thing. Now, does the person have to live in that space and dwell in that space for months and years? Maybe not, but allow someone to have their experience, to experience the experience until they're able to move beyond it. Now, should that be 20 years, 30 years, 10 years? Probably not, but who am I to tell someone? Who are you? any of us to tell someone how long they are supposed to feel the way that they felt. Sure, they can make it neutral. It happened. I've experienced the experience and now I'm choosing to move forward. But it doesn't mean that the experience didn't happen. Yet, you, the one who caused it, you, the one who didn't take responsibility for what was done or what wasn't done that caused it, you're only adding to that person's hurt, to that person's disappointment. Because often when people are hurt and they're disappointed, it's because they come into a realization that what they believed in, what they trusted in, who they believed in, who they trusted in was not what and who they thought they were. That maybe you lived, a, you, you taught away or spoke away or proclaimed to be a way that you weren't even really living. Now, listen, I'm not talking about people making mistakes. I'm not talking about where they say practice what you preach. Many of us preach, teach, say a thing, but we find ourselves in a moment or in a season that, oops, we've dropped the ball. But being able to say, I dropped the ball and then taking responsibility for it and, and apologizing for it is you being humble, is you being a selfless person, not full of fear and, and scarcity, but living in abundance, a living above the line, not below it, not in a negative energy way. And so I invite all of us, all of us who have found ourselves in that place to just reflect, allow people to feel the way that they feel, allow people to experience the experience the way that they need to, but don't 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 beat them up. Don't guilt them or bully them into thinking your way. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That's selfish. And I told you there are six things that God hates and one, the seventh, he despises. And that's pride. So I encourage us to live above the line, to be abundant living and thinking and considering others 
before and above ourselves. We're at least equal, right? Allow people to be human. One to another. It's not your way or the highway. It's not that you're right and everyone else is wrong. And someone isn't allowed to feel what they felt. To experience what they experienced. Their experience was real. So let them have it. But don't beat them up for having it, right? So I encourage us today. I encourage us today to all live above the line in a high energy place, in a place of love that God commands us to love your brethren, to consider people above yourself. The truth is, if the very same thing happened to you that happened to someone else and they feel the way that they feel, that they would like an apology, that they would like acknowledgement that what happened to them was real, you would want that. If it was your brother, your sister, your spouse, your friend, your father, your mother, your child, you would want someone to not expect you to just act like it didn't happen. You would want someone to take responsibility, at least acknowledge. The truth is if I came to your house and I was at an event that you were putting on and you had a stare a railing that was rickety and broken and you allowed me to come and on the exit I went to grab the rail and the rail fell over and I broke my leg I broke my neck I broke my ankle I would expect you to take responsibility for that pay the hospital bill pay the ambulance bill do something to say oh my god I'm sorry that happened to you but pride and selfishness and a scarcity mindset would say, well, no, maybe you should have paid attention to what you were doing. No, you knew that your rail was broken. You knew before I got there and you knew you were having this event and you put nothing in place to prepare the space for those who were coming. You didn't put up a sign. You didn't inform anyone. You put no constraints in place. And even if you put up a sign and you informed everyone, that doesn't mean out of habit someone wasn't going to grab that rail or, or step on that crickety step that fell over, right? That gave in when it was stepped on. No, you knew people were coming. So you probably should have put some constraints in place or fixed that thing to take away the risk and the possibility of something going wrong. So I invite us to consider others, consider others, consider others, beloved. God loves you and so do I. Be encouraged.